You got to give your manager something when he puts his head on the pillow at night to think about. Well, clearly, Ricardo Pepe has done that. Ricardo Pepe, in the limited minutes that my man is playing in, and we knew it was a tough situation. He's behind the starting striker for PSV, also the captain of PSV and Luke De Jong. But he has managed to nuzzle his way to the top, and he is leading goal scorer in the Netherlands in the Air Divisie. So congratulations to Crado Pepe for, for having that mentality. Um, scores a hat trick. Tony, what, what say you about Ricardo Pepe scoring against uh, his former club in Groningen when he first made the initial loan from Augsburg and he tore it up, scores three against them, four shots on target, one chance uh, that he had that you, you were left wanting more. But 90 minutes, hat trick, incredible. This, this kid's on fire. Yeah, first off, good for him, right? He gets an opportunity. Uh, Luke DeYoung hurt in the stands, and he gets this opportunity to, to score three goals. So um, the one thing you can say about Ricardo Pepe, Charlie, and you know how important this is as a nine, especially if you're a nine that is, we'll call it the second nine, right? When you get chances, you got to make the most of them. You got to give your manager something to think about. You got to give Peter Bosch something to go lay his head on the, 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 the pillow at night and go, Hmm, should I should I find a way to squeeze him in? Do I start him? Continue to start him? I I loved Ricardo Pepe's comment after the game. They asked about next game. What does he expect next game with Luke De Jong back? And he he says uh, he he said something to the effect, "Well, normally when you score a hat trick, you're starting the next game no matter what." But I'm not going to comment on it. <laughs> but, well, he just kind of <laughs> commented on it, right? Well, you <laughs> but, did comment but, on but, it. Well, yeah, but I thought it was great. Like that, and I, I was paraphrasing, but that's essentially what I don't want to talk about it. But we're talking about it, right? Um, he can only look Pochettino. He, he got the opportunity under Pochettino. He scores a big goal. Um, he can only do what, what he can do and what the, in the moments that he has, what, what he has the chance to do. He has to take advantage of them. And that's what he's done. And you have to give him, whether you like, whether you're a Balogun fan, whether you're, you know, a, a Sergeant fan, whoever, it doesn't matter. You can't deny that Ricardo Pepe has taken advantage of all the opportunities that have been given to him. And then oh, after that, 100%. You, yeah, after that, you make a decision on who you like, who you want to be the guy. For me, I'm especially with the national team, when you're coming into camp now, remember, this is November 25th, right? Camp is not until, until uh, March. what, March, right? So next time when we're down at SoFi for those, he's on fire right now. There's no doubt about it. But what does it look like in March? We hope that this continues. Now, it's not going to continue at a hat trick a week. It's not like that. But continuously scoring goals, not going not going for droughts for four or five games and then scoring a goal. For me, especially with strikers, when you go into camp, unless you've been blessed over the last 10 years with Harry Kane or Lewandowski or in Erling Holland, like guys like that, unless you've been blessed with those guys, and we're not blessed with those guys, nor, by the way, is most teams in the world <laughs> – blessed with yeah. those guys you generally for me go at the guy that's scoring goals the guy that's feeling it in front of goal the guy that is is taking advantage of service that he's getting however many that is um so ricardo pepe man props to you uh he's well i guess he's tied right now for the the lead right he might be behind on assists i think it was they only have one assist yeah, that, he i had it earlier the, okay the young has four is it yeah, so he technically is ahead, but you know he's but great, who's, great, who's good, good on these him. Days, you yeah, know I mean? who's, yeah, yeah. Talking about goal scorers. Um, yeah, Tony. I also want to quote Peter Bosch here, the head coach of PSV, because um, he's often come out and and has spoke, I think, loudly about Ricardo Pepe and Luke De Jong and what they think of Luke and yada yada. But this is what he had to say after the hat trick. Two such top scorers in a team may seem ideal but that means you have to make changes then maybe you should play 442 while we have had a system for a year and a half that everyone thrives on and that is with one striker well then i guess not everyone's thriving right um so th then it comes down to and we've seen the, another comment in the past before i remember we said it's great ricardo pepe's doing good you know he's he's a talent but however Luke De Jong is Luke De Jong. He's class. He scores all these goals, blah, blah, blah. He's the captain, right? At some point, that changes. And, and you said it best, right? There's a lot of time between now and March. Two things need to happen. 
It's either one, they make a decision to say, Ricardo Pepe, you are who we going, you are who we are going with for the future. You're young, you're producing, you have overtaken what Luke Dion gives us. And now Luke Dion in January, you're faced with you're staying, or you make that move that most veterans at, at that stage in their career will say, all right, my last paycheck, I'm going to Saudi Arabia. I'm, I'm going to China. I'm, I'm going some MLS. I'm going somewhere to collect a paycheck to score goals and play. Or B, they say, Luke De Jong, you're back. We're going to get you going again because we still see the value in you and you play. We think you fit our system the best. And that's when in January, Ricardo Pepe, makes the move and you cash in if you're PSV because you probably won't get a higher fee for Ricardo Pepe if he's not your starting striker and scoring goals in the way that he's doing. So you're faced with a dilemma. Tony, what do you think happens and what's best case scenario for, for Pepe? Um, well, for Ricardo Pepe's to play 90 minutes, right? And the, the you read Bosch's quotes. There's only one reason Peter Bosch is making that quote is because of Ricardo Pepe. <laughs> because of the if Ricardo Pepe's not scoring goals, Peter Bosch is not talking about changing a formation that has been successful for the last year and a half. Think about that. And think about that for a minute. Like what manager in the world does that for one guy? Um in this case, it's a guy that is producing and he's I, I said earlier, you got to give your manager something when he puts his head on the pillow at night to think about. Well, clearly, Ricardo Pepe has done that. This is why Peter Bosch is even having this discussion, because nobody changes um, changes their way. That's not what they do. Um, as far as the 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 move, um, you know, Luke De Jong is thirty four years old. I, in an ideal world, you know, and who knows what his ambitions are. So we're kind of speaking of things maybe we don't know about. But in an ideal world, if you're the manager, like. I'm keeping the young striker, right? The guy that's going to get me to the next level. Um, I, I don't imagine, though, that they want to get rid of Luke De Young or Pepe midseason in the January window. Something likely will happen at the end of the year. Although the more pressing one to find 90 minutes is obviously Ricardo Pepe. He's got to find 90 minutes in his game. He probably has until the end of this season, um, until May or whenever their season ends, to continue in this mode. He's not going to like it. But then after that, I think Pochettino is going to expect him to be a 90-minute guy someplace. Yeah, 100%. And again, it comes to that point. If they do decide to stick with Luke Diong or at least see out the season and these big transfers come in, then you, you wonder if, okay, if there's a, a price on Ricardo Pepe, let's say it's $50 million, and and they 40 to $50 million, let's say they get that offer, what is the best – club scenario for Ricardo Pepe is it is it a certain league that you'd want to see him would you want to see him go back to the Bundesliga obviously not with an Augsburg but a team that's playing obviously he's going to have a high price so a smaller team can't come in and buy Ricardo Pepe it, would you want to see him loaned what would his price months? be what 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 do you think his price would be you know I don't age, go by the transfer smart. market yeah like say, uh, on, you know for his age striker scoring goals like that Forty million. So the most steady, a lot of for a forty million. You're taking, goals? yeah. I mean, again. So if you think about that number, there's most Serie A teams that are out, right? I think Serie A would be good for him. Um, there's, there's not really championship teams, right? You're talking Premier League money. You're talking maybe a, a, a perfect fit. Now, not in France, uh, maybe somewhere in Spain. Spain would be a great league to go play in for him if he could get a situation to play. Um, because I think I, I, know, I think Serie A would be great. Izzy, Izzy thinks I'm crazy. 40 million, LOL. I think 25. Anthony Tharp, 25 to 30. You got to remember, my man went to the Bundesliga for 25, 20. Yeah. And 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 to a club that was lower in the in the table, right? This is now PSV where, yeah, okay, he's not playing consistently, but he's scoring in, in Champions League. He's he's shown that he could have success in Europe. And with with a team like PSV, I think that when you're playing at a club of that stature, your price tag only goes up. So what was 2025 when he left MLS, it's, it's only going to go up from here. So I'd say 35, 30 at the minimum. But I'm thinking around 40s where PSV would say, all right, we're willing to cut the future at this position, someone who we've groomed to take over for, 
take over for Luke Young, which would be a perfect synergy versus, all right, we're going to cut bait and, and find the new young next striker that is not a guarantee where it feels like Pepe is a guarantee to be successful at PSV. Uh, was Pepe that much going um, out of, uh, out yeah. of MLS? Yeah. Really? I, I didn't realize. I, I know it was at least 20. Lot. Yeah. I thought it was less, um, but I mean, I've been, that's that happened a couple of years ago. So, um, and then where's, the other one was a Ivis. Yeah. 20. Um, how, so what's the highest. So tricky Lozano, I know was 45 million, right. Um, that went out of, so someone bought tricky Lozano for 45 minutes. I, I guess that was, uh, that would have oh, been, PSV uh, paid 11 or 12 says, uh, Ivis says, okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, Cody Kakpo, he went for 40 something. And then so so it's not like PSV sells a lot of guys for 45. So you're talking so Irving Lozano was the most. I just looked it up here that they've sold for 45 minutes. So, so you're asking to sell Ricardo Pepe for 40 million. That's like right at the top of PSV's sales all time. Um, but okay, in, whatever in that they, in that regard, 25 or 30 may get the job done. 100 right so so then so then that puts a couple more teams in play right like that puts a couple more leagues in play but in italy you're gonna have to go to you're not going to milan because of morata um and i don't even know that you fit the, in what they're doing well i don't know what the hell they're doing um <laughs> you you're not going to inter uh could you potentially go to juve they need another striker right uh but they've yeah. got one that is a younger striker that that helped them win it there you know he won his first uh, jonathan david <clears throat> Yeah, he's out of that's remember, your, that's Jonathan David's out of contract at the end of the season as well. But but either way, I think well, first off, if someone pays 30 million for him, he's probably going um to a place that they think he's gonna play, right? Um, Juve, you know, Vlahovic, does he stay there long term? Who knows? The one thing we see at least at Juventus now, they're okay with Americans. I didn't know in my life that I would ever say that. I didn't know in my life that I would ever say AC Milan is okay with americans now but they are they've got guys that are now being successful for them so they might look that way um you know but i i think italy or spain would be would be great spain is a uh, spain it's a little bit different style obviously but i think it would suit his game perfectly to learn um that but again it's going to come down to playing um so in, it, in your mind tony given where pepe is right now and and the form he's in I'm sure you could kind of get a glimpse of, or an idea of what his max ceiling is, right? If he fulfills his potential, how do you compare him to Jonathan David? Who who would you take if you had the choice between the two strikers? I think, yeah, look, Jonathan David's a different type of striker who's actually for a national team, not even playing striker, right? He's playing right. underneath a little bit. Um, I I like Pepe. I like his size, um, but Jonathan David's, you know, I, I know you, we, we have maybe some differences on Jonathan David, but, I like what Jonathan David does. I think I would right now. I think I would take Ricardo Pepe uh, because I, I like his upside uh, mm -hmm. right now. I like some of the things he does, and there's there's something to be said for, and and not a lot of people would know what it feels like to be left off a World Cup team when you thought you should have been part of the team, and when you help that team get you to a World Cup. There's nothing. There's nothing that that can replace the, the the fight that you must have in your in your body to to do that you know most most guys in most guys in his position who help score goals and help their team get to a world cup they go to a world cup right <laughs> so they don't know what it feels like to be left off the world cup roster and be be left till the last day like there's a like you have to have this itch in your stomach charlie that is just like eating at you every single day to get back and there's something about that drive. Uh, fortunately, I, I never, I, I didn't experience that, but I can just imagine, like if I, if I thought, like I had to fight to get to 2002, but I can imagine if I didn't get help, you know, if I helped the team in 1990 get there, and I didn't make that team, like yeah. what drive that would have given me. And he's kind of playing off of that right now. There's no way you can tell me. He's spoken about it as well, but there's no way you can tell me he doesn't think about that every day.